Hello Sunmers and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today I'll be giving you 50 various tips and tricks in League. From crazy item interactions to unique champion mechanics, there's something for everyone. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into this because there's a lot to cover. 1. Ivern has a unique interaction with Krugs, only getting the gold and experience from the first two rock guys. Don't waste your time trying to clear these, instead let your teammates clear them for full value. 2. If you're playing without your lock screen, you can always hold the spacebar to snap the screen back to yourself. This is great for refocusing on yourself during hectic teamfights. 3. When you're about to hit level 6, you can hide out of vision to surprise your opponents. This works especially well if you're playing someone with a powerful ultimate like Leona. 4. Speaking of level 6, if Sheikah was last seen before hitting level 6 and he uses his ultimate, the enemies will see him as the last level they saw him at. If Sheikah tries to hide when they reach level 6, you can easily tell the difference by looking at the level of the two clones. Number 5. You can sound E a minion and then use Prowler's Claw to travel to it, making for some pretty crazy plays. You can also Prowler's Claw during Scion's passive, making AD Lethality Scion an even stronger off meta pick than before. Number 6. Fiora can proc vitals with any damage, as long as she's the source of damage. This means that you can use her Ignite to proc a vital when you're too far away and need that extra boost of speed. Number 7. Biscuits work differently than other potions. Each individual biscuit gives you a permanent 50 mana increase, applying as soon as you use the biscuit. If you're in a fight and you need some mana, pop a biscuit. Selling these biscuits will give you the mana, so don't worry about freeing up your inventory. Number 8. Ezreal's E lets you escape hooks by buffering the sun from the hook with the displacement. If your reflexes are good, you never need to worry about dodging a hook the boring way. Number 9. When warding, your cursor will change the green if it's in the bush. This is great for wards at the edge of the bush, giving you more vision with your ward, also making it so you don't ward out of it. Number 10. Speaking of wards, you can ward over some massive walls in the game. The most popular example of this is in the bot lane, where you can ward the river brush from near the red side turret. Before we get too far in the list, our question of the day is, what's one thing about your main that most people don't know? Let us know in the comments down below. Who knows, we might even include it in another video. For now, let's keep going with the rest of our tips. Number 11. Just like wards, your flash and blink abilities interact differently with big walls. If you can aim your flash past the halfway point of a large area of terrain, you can flash over the wall. Number 12. The next tip is extra important in the mid and late game. The champion that is tanking Baron will get the Baron's Gaze debuff, making them deal 50% less damage to Baron. You always want your weakest champion tanking to finish as fast as possible. Number 13. Keep in mind that 15 CS is about the same amount of gold as killing a champion with no shutdown. If you're up 30 CS on your opponent, you pretty much kill them twice. Number 14. Try to use your Ignite as early as possible so you can keep vision on your target and lower the incoming healing. In the bot lane, the enemy ADC might use their heal during Ignite, giving you the advantage in a 2v2. Number 15. Don't use potions unless you'll get the full value from the healing amount. This mostly applies to the early game, where a potion can heal to 20% of your health. Number 16. Speaking of potions, always use your potions when you get into a fight. The passive healing you can get can be the deciding factor in a super close fight. Number 17. You don't need to be directly in the base to buy items. You can go off to the edge to save some time getting to lane. The radius for shopping is around the actual shopkeeper, so stay close if you want to get that head start. Number 18. When you go back, you can use a corrupting potion to give you an extra regeneration in base. It'll only save you a few seconds, but if you do it every single time that you recall, you'll save yourself a minute or two over the course of the game. Number 19. When you take a turret plating, the turret gets a defensive buff that makes it harder to get more. This buff stacks with each plating taken, giving you the turret more defensive buffs. The only way for the defense to go away is to wait. Because of this, it's usually better to back off after you get a plate or two. Number 20. To make the most out of your herald, summon it for the final two plates of the turret during the actual siege. The charge attack ignores any defensive buffs, always destroying two plates. 21. Turret plate gold is split between whoever dealt damage to the turret and who is close to the turret. If you can, try to get your carry solo gold when possible. You can usually let your ADC get a plate or their own after getting a double kill bot lane. Number 22. If there's only a rift herald near a turret when the plates are taken, the person who summoned it will get the gold. Number 23. You can place a ward on an interactable unit to make it no longer work. This is almost always often seen when players put wards on top of Thresh's lantern so the enemies can't take it. They don't get to go home. Number 24. Rengar can use his blast plant on the bot side of the map to start charging his ferocity early. To do this, hit the plant with your Q at around 1 minute and 24 seconds. This will give you a faster clear and help you keep nice and healthy. Number 25. Yasuo can ult off of any displacement, not just skills classified as knockups. This means that every hook in the game, even the mini displacements like Trenno's Pillar or Sejuani's Knockback. We're halfway through our list, so let's take a breather and talk about our Pro Guides giveaway. From now until January 14th, we're giving away Riot Points, coaching sessions, Pro Guide points, subscriptions, and so much more. If you're already subscribed to our channel, you're halfway there. 
The only thing that you need to do now is join our community Discord with a link in the description. Follow the steps in our Discord's giveaway section and you'll be entered right away. Now let's get back to the rest of our video. Number 26. The Astros win while can block any projectile. But did you know that Lulu's Polymorph and Lilia's Ultimate have their own projectile? Try not to accidentally use an ability into that wind wall. Number 27. Cinder can use her Q right as she casts her E, making her sun almost impossible to dodge. You can do the same thing with her W, but it's a little bit harder to pull off. Number 28. Jace can do something similar, being able to place his gate while his Q is flying. This makes it harder for the enemy to react to the sudden change in speed. Number 29. Orin's ultimate counts as a projectile, which means you can totally remove the ramp with Yasuo, Samira, or Braum. 30. You can flash at the end of some abilities to give them some extra range. For example, Camille and Chen can flash during their stun and taunt animations. This is a great way to start off a fight or get a crucial pick, so practice, practice, and practice. 31. Some jugglers can start raptors and barely take any damage, like Amumu and Kane. You can even start the enemy raptors if they aren't watching, giving you a huge advantage early on. 32. Sona's strongest power cord is from her W, a massive damage that stacks with exhaust. You can lower an enemy's damage up to 70% in the late game. 33. You will automatically be given a yellow trinket if you leave base without buying one. This is great if you're trying to get out of the shop as soon as possible, or if you just forget. 34. Shagel's ultimate can be used to get over thin walls, like the ones around Baron and Dragon Pit. You can seriously mess with people if you ult into the pit, then stealth out of there. 35. This one is for the Soraka players out there. When you land a Q, wait until the end of the regeneration effect before healing your teammate. You can give your teammate a whole lot of extra healing if you don't jump the gun and use your W. 36. Heimerdinger's turret will shoot a fully charged beam whenever you land a different ability, so try to put down a turret when you're about to land your W or E. Try to always save at least one turret charge to help you play around your lasers. 37. Pike can use Prowler's Claw active ability after using his E to make sure that stun lands. This is a great way to secure a pick on an enemy, so use it as often as possible, if you're not trying to have fun with Duskblade. 38. Swing can place his W before pulling a CC'd opponent with his passive, making it impossible to dodge the burst. This will take a little bit of time to get a hang of, but it's Swain's strongest combo. 39. Some skills will follow champions no matter what they do. Some popular examples are Warwick's Q and Maokai's W. If you time it right, you can easily follow flashes and dashes and stay on the squishies, or bait them into jumping into the turret. Number 40. Olaf gets more attack speed the lower his health is, so you can get a faster clear at the cost of your health if you don't get a leech. It is a good idea if you plan to do a full clear, but it's a little bit more dangerous if you get invaded. Number 41. Nami's E applies and detonates the mark of Imperial Mandate, making it the strongest mythic item on her. Make sure that you're using E as often as possible in fights. 42. If Echo's ultimate goes through his W, he'll trigger the sun even if he doesn't end up on the field. This is also a great way that surprises enemies, but requires a lot of planning. Another cool tip is that his W will land in 3 seconds, and his ultimate will follow him in 4 seconds. Meaning that if you plan 1 second with your W before you jump into your ultimate, you can get the sun off and get the shield. Number 43. Zoe can get two uses of her empowered auto attack passive with her Q, one after the first cast and one after the recast. Number 44. Bar can use his ultimate to protect turrets from Rift Herald's charge, rendering Shelly useless. 45. Blitzcrank's ultimate destroys shields, making it powerful against champions like Seth. 46. Nocturne's ult will always take away enemy spell shields, allowing them to see during the cast. Try to ping for your teammates if you have the vision. Number 47. If you're trying to be sneaky, don't hit any wards that are disabled by pink wards. The enemy can see you every single time you hit that ward. This is especially important to remember when you're doing an objective like Baron, so you can avoid getting it stolen. Number 48. Some champions can still channel their abilities while they're inside of Tom Kench. For example, Rumble can keep shooting his flames while inside of TK's tummy. Not sure about the practical uses of that one, but it looks hilarious. Number 49. You can teleport to Zack's blobs when he's in his passive to make sure that he successfully survives. This is a great way to show up unexpected and help out your jungler. You can even teleport on multiple blobs, securing more health for Zack after he revives. You can also smite the blobs if you're on the enemy team. Number 50. Kindred's ultimate stops all units from dying, which means that she can bait smites and keep objectives like Baron or Dragon alive until she's ready to smite. That'll wrap up our favorite 50 tips and tricks to use in this game. We hope that you enjoyed this video, it was a lot of fun researching random things that champions can do. Don't forget to let us know what your champion can do that we may not know about. And as always, thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.